Android, robot. An android is a robot or other artificial being designed to resemble a human, and often made from a flesh-like material. Historically, androids were completely within the domain of science fiction and frequently seen in film and television, but recent advances in robot technology now allow the design of functional and realistic humanoid robots. The word was coined from the Greek root nu delta rho, and man, male, as opposed to nu theta rho omega pi, anthrop, human being, and the suffix, having the form or likeness of. In Greek, however, alpha nu delta rho omicron epsilon iota delta sigma is an adjective. While the term android is used in reference to human-looking robots in general, a robot with a female appearance can also be referred to as a gynoid. The Oxford English Dictionary traces the earliest use, as Android, to Ephraim Chambers' Cyclopedia, in reference to an automaton that St. Albertus Magnus allegedly created. The term android appears in U.S. patents as early as 1863 in reference to miniature human-like toy automatons. The term android was used in a more modern sense by the French author Auguste Villiers de Lille Adam in his work Tomorrow's Eve, 1886. This story features an artificial human-like robot named Hadaly. As said by the officer in the story, in this age of Raelian advancement, who knows what goosen in the mind of those responsible for these mechanical dolls. The term made an impact into English pulp science fiction starting from Jack Williamson's The Cometeers, 1936, and the distinction between mechanical robots and fleshy androids was popularized by Edmund Hamilton's Captain Future, 1940-1944. Although Carl Chopak's Robots in R.U.R. Rossum's Universal Robots, 1921 the play that introduced the word robot to the world, were organic artificial humans, the word robot has come to primarily refer to mechanical humans, animals, and other beings. The term android can mean either one of these, while a cyborg, cybernetic organism or bionic man, would be a creature that is a combination of organic and mechanical parts. The term droid popularized by George Lucas in the original Star Wars film and now used widely within science fiction, originated as an abridgment of android, but has been used by Lucas and others to mean any robot, including distinctly non-human form machines like R2-D2. The word android was used in episode What Are Little Girls Made Of? The abbreviation Andy, coined as a pejorative by writer Philip K. Dick in his novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? has seen some further usage, such as within the TV series Total Recall 2070. Authors have used the term android in more diverse ways than robot or cyborg. In some fictional works, the difference between a robot and android is only their appearance, with androids being made to look like humans on the outside but with robot-like internal mechanics. In other stories, authors have used the word android to mean a wholly organic, yet artificial, creation. Other fictional depictions of androids fall somewhere in between. Eric G. Wilson, who defines androids as a synthetic human being, distinguishes between three types of androids, based on their body's composition. Although human morphology is not necessarily the ideal form for working robots, the fascination in developing robots that can mimic it can be found historically in the assimilation of two concepts, simulacra, devices that exhibit likeness, and automata. Devices that have independence. Several projects aiming to create androids that look, and, to a certain degree, speak or act like a human being have been launched or are underway. Japanese robotics have been leading the field since the 1970s. Waseda University initiated the Wabot project in 1967, and in 1972 completed the Wabot 1, the first android, a full scale humanoid intelligent robot. Its limb control system allowed it to walk with the lower limbs, and to grip and transport objects with hands, using tactile sensors. Its vision system allowed it to measure distances and directions to objects using external receptors, artificial eyes and ears. And its conversation system allowed it to communicate with a person in Japanese, with an artificial mouth. In 1984, Wabatu was revealed, and made a number of improvements. It was capable of playing the organ. Wabat 2 had 10 fingers and 2 feet, and I was able to read a score of music. It was also able to accompany a person. In 1986, Honda began its humanoid research and development program, to create humanoid robots capable of interacting successfully with humans. The Intelligent Robotics Lab, directed by Hiroshi Ishiguro at Osaka University, and Kokoro Company, Limited, have demonstrated the Actroid at Expo 2005 in Aichi Prefecture. Japan and released the Telenoid R1 in 2010. 
In 2006, Kokoro Company developed a new Dare 2 Android. The height of the human body part of Dare 2 is 165 centimeters. There are 47 mobile points. Dare 2 can not only change its expression but also move its hands and feet and twist its body. The air servo system which Kokoro Company developed originally is used for the actuator. As a result of having an actuator controlled precisely with air pressure via servo system, the movement is very fluid and there is very little noise. Dare 2 realized a slimmer body than that of the former version by using a smaller cylinder. Outwardly Dare 2 has a more beautiful proportion. Compared to the previous model, Dare 2 has thinner arms and a wider repertoire of expressions. Once programmed, it is able to choreograph its motions and gestures with its voice. The Intelligent Mechatronics Lab, directed by Hiroshi Kobayashi at the Tokyo University of Science, has developed an android head called Saya which was exhibited at Robodex 2002 in Yokohama, Japan. There are several other initiatives around the world involving humanoid research and development at this time, which will hopefully introduce a broader spectrum of realized technology in the near future. Now Saya is working at the Science University of Tokyo as a guide. The Waseda University, Japan, and NTT Docomo's manufacturers have succeeded in creating a shape-shifting robot WD2. It is capable of changing its face. At first, the creators decided the positions of the necessary points to express the outline, eyes, nose, and so on of a certain person. The robot expresses its face by moving all points to the decided positions, they say. The first version of the robot was first developed back in 2003. After that, a year later, they made a couple of major improvements to the design. The robot features an elastic mask made from the average head dummy. It uses a driving system with a 3 doof unit. The WD2 robot can change its facial features by activating specific facial points on a mask, with each point possessing 3 degrees of freedom. This one has 17 facial points, for a total of 56 degrees of freedom. As for the materials they used, the WD2's mask is fabricated with a highly elastic material called septum, with bits of steel wool mixed in for added strength. Other technical features reveal a shaft driven behind the mask at the desired facial point driven by a DC motor with a simple pulley and a slide screw. Apparently, the researchers can also modify the shape of the mask based on actual human faces. To copy a face, they need only a 3D scanner to determine the locations of an individual's 17 facial points. After that, they are then driven into position using a laptop and 56 motor control boards. In addition, the researchers also mention that the shifting robot can even display an individual's hairstyle and skin color if a photo of their face is projected onto the 3D mask. Professor Nadia Tailman, a Nanyang Technological University scientist, directed efforts of the Institute for Media Innovation along with the School of Computer Engineering in the development of a social robot, Nadine. Nadine is powered by software similar to Apple's Siri or Microsoft's Cortana. Nadine may become a personal assistant in offices and homes in future, or she may become a companion for the young and the elderly. A SOC professor Gerald Seed from the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering in the Being There Center led a three-year R&D development in telepresence robotics, creating Edgar. A remote user can control Edgar with the user's face and expressions displayed on the robot's face in real time. The robot also mimics their upper body movements. Kitech researched and developed Ever One, an Android interpersonal communications model capable of emulating human emotional expression by a facial musculature and capable of rudimentary conversation, having a vocabulary of around 400 words. She is tall and weighs, matching the average figure of a Korean woman in her 20s. Everyone's name derives from the biblical Eve, plus the letter R for robot. Everyone's advanced computing processing power enables speech recognition and vocal synthesis, at the same time processing lip synchronization and visual recognition by 90-degree micro-CCD cameras with face recognition technology. An independent microchip inside her artificial brain handles gesture expression, body coordination, and emotion expression. Her whole body is made of highly advanced synthetic jelly silicon and with 60 artificial joints in her face, neck, and lower body, she is able to demonstrate realistic facial expressions and sing while simultaneously dancing. In South Korea, the Ministry of Information and Communication has an ambitious plan to put a robot in every household by 2020. Several robot cities have been planned for the country, the first will be built in 2016 at a cost of 500 billion won. 440 million U.S. dollars, of which 50 billion is direct government investment.
The new Robot City will feature research and development centers for manufacturers and parts suppliers, as well as exhibition halls and a stadium for robot competitions. The country's new robotics ethics charter will establish ground rules and laws for human interaction with robots in the future, setting standards for robotics users and manufacturers, as well as guidelines on ethical standards to be programmed into robots to prevent human abuse of robots and vice versa. Walt Disney and a staff of Imagineers created great moments with Mr. Lincoln that debuted at the 1964 New York World's Fair. Hanson Robotics Incorporated, of Texas and Case produced an android portrait of Albert Einstein, using Hanson's facial android technology mounted on Case's life-size walking bipedal robot body. This Einstein android, also called Albert Dubo, thus represents the first full-body walking android in history, see video at Hanson Robotics. The FedEx Institute of Technology, and the University of Texas at Arlington also developed the android portrait of sci-fi author Philip K. Dick, creator of Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep? The basis for the film Blade Runner, with full conversational capabilities that incorporated thousands of pages of the author's works. In 2005, the PKD Android won a first-place Artificial Intelligence Award from I. Androids are a staple of science fiction. Isaac Asimov pioneered the fictionalization of the science of robotics and artificial intelligence, notably in his 1950 series I, Robot. One thing common to most fictional androids is that the real-life technological challenges associated with creating thoroughly human-like robots, such as the creation of strong artificial intelligence, are assumed to have been solved. Fictional androids are often depicted as mentally and physically equal or superior to humans, moving, thinking and speaking as fluidly as them. The tension between the non-human substance and the human appearance, or even human ambitions, of androids is the dramatic impetus behind most of your fictional depictions. Some android heroes seek, like Pinocchio, to become human, as in the film Bicentennial Man, or Data In. Others, as in the film Westworld, rebel against abuse by careless humans. Android Hunter Deckarding Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And its film adaptation Blade Runner discovers that his targets appear to be in some ways, more human than he is. Android stories, therefore, are not essentially stories about androids, they are stories about the human condition and what it means to be human. One aspect of writing about the meaning of humanity is to use discrimination against androids as a mechanism for exploring racism in society, as in Blade Runner. Perhaps the clearest example of this is John Brunner's 1968 novel Into the Slave Nebula, where the blue-skinned android slaves are explicitly shown to be fully human. More recently, the androids Bishop and Annalee call in the films Aliens and Alien Resurrection are used as vehicles for exploring how humans deal with the presence of another. Female androids, or gynoids, are often seen in science fiction, and can be viewed as a continuation of the long tradition of men attempting to create the stereotypical perfect woman. Examples include the Greek myth of Pygmalion and the female robot Maria in Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Some gynoids, like Pre and Blade Runner, are designed as sex objects, with the intent of pleasing men's violent sexual desires, or as submissive, servile companions, such as in the Stepford Wives. Fiction about gynoids has therefore been described as reinforcing essentialist ideas of femininity, although others have suggested that the treatment of androids is a way of exploring racism and misogyny in society. The 2015 Japanese film Sinara, starring Geminoid F., was promoted as the first movie to feature an android performing opposite a human actor. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.